I'm not big on talking about it. I mean, that's been my problem my entire life. <laughs> People have always tried to over-intellectualize stuff, and it's like any art form, music, poetry, whatever, it's supposed to be visceral, that's the point to me. It's like that novel's supposed to move me, that movie's supposed to make me feel a certain way, or that song is supposed to, you know, what, what the hell is thinking got to do with it? I was completely obsessed with all things punk rock as a kid. It was the fastest, rawest, just a big ripped open blister. And it just fit my general demeanor, my personality, which was to pursue that noise, that level of energy. It wasn't enough to sit back and spectate. I want to make records, I want to make flyers, I want to play in bars, I want to write songs, I want to do all this stuff. So that's why I decided to try to start a band. And a lot of the side things that came with it, like being able to design some cassette sleeves and doing a lot of flyers for shows we were playing and stuff, that was like a big breakthrough for me. You know, just the do-it-yourself credo that was part of that movement. But at a certain point, it's like I gotta do something else, I gotta get a job, I gotta have a life. So I signed up for four years. I was literally stationed halfway between Seattle and Vancouver. Left Minneapolis right when that was blossoming at that point in time with Who's Could Do and Replacements and Soul Asylum. Got to walk out of that at its peak and go to Seattle right when it was pre Mudhoney, Nirvana, Melvins, and got to see the, you know, re, re experience one of those uh, energy explosions for a second time back to back, which actually got me further into music and doing more band stuff than I was actually doing in Minneapolis at the time. Amrep, the record label, basically was just a, a, a vanity label solely so I could get records together so I would get a real deal from a real label for my band called Halo Flies. So I would make records and then in turn send them to Touch and Go and Discord and other labels. And uh, all my friends were kind of tugging on my shirt sleeve saying, well, how'd you do that? How'd you get that done and get that thing and how'd you put a sleeve together? So I started doing it for friends bands. Mud Honey, the U Men. Before I knew it, we were getting written up as a real label. Granted, it was being run out of a box under my bunk in the barracks. Like, literally, and the record label was a hand grenade crate that I would pull out and have the back stock. It was a, tens of dollars involved in it at that point in time. The thing about AMREP, you know, it was an aesthetic. That was the big thing for me growing up, was discovering an aesthetic. Not just a label and not just a, a group of bands or a group of releases, but finding some aesthetic that, that bonded people together, that people were participants in as a community that you just wanted to learn more about and you just couldn't get enough of. Got out of the uh, Marine Corps and moved back to Minneapolis, and uh, the record label was actually gaining more momentum than the band. I was able to still work with music, but also like the other parts I enjoyed, which was the visuals, the design, the art aspect of putting together a whole release became my day job. And I started making stuff really dirty, smudges and smears and tears. And I'm like, what am I doing? I just spent three hours to make this smudge look authentic. Wait a second. Scan this. I just got a smudge. It was just like, it, it, it was just like, ah, like get off the computer. The first time I posted a lino cut that I had done and was really proud of, I posted it online and someone said, what Photoshop filter did you use to make that look like a lino cut? That kind of summed it all up. Everyone's used to machine-made stuff. It doesn't mean anything. High-tech equipment. Spoons. The whole paradigm of music right now is completely changed. There isn't the same old work on the songs, make it, release it, they will come, they will buy it. It's dead. The second you release it in any format, it's available to the entire world for free instantaneously. 
that said, people still want the object. Like here's a good example, something really cool. Slowly the collectability of vinyl has come back. And I think it's a lot of it's because of this desire to have something more than a file on your computer or a password with access to a database with a bunch of songs. These ones are cool. No matter how much they aggregate all the music of the world into one big server, there's always something that a human being made somewhere that creates some different value that you want. With me and the Melvins, we've been working together quite a bit on handmade sleeves, hand stamped, literal lino cuts going onto jackets. This is a band that, you know, has been around for 30 years, can fill a room anywhere in the world. Accredited, and rightfully so, with creating of the whole grunge sound. They started literally with Kurt Cobain as their roadie. There's eight albums involved in this box set. Each record is hand silk screened, stenciled, stamped, penciled. Luckily, the first one I opened didn't have any obscenities in it, because most of them do. Like even getting the records made with no label so that we're hand stamping the name of the record and the record label. It's not an LP anymore. Now it's literally an object. We're only going to make a hundred of these. That's it. But, you know, it's like these are expensive things, but the fan knows this didn't get shoveled off to some factory in Korea. This was handmade, so that's the future. See, the ones I like usually have noise. The ink's not sitting on the paper flat and even, so you're not getting a perfect fill like right there. That's what gives each piece like a different character. What we do is start with a print like this, cut it down, and then glue the print right onto the record sleeve. Seriously, you're not buying this record to listen to the music. I've seen people send me pictures back of them framed up, which makes sense to me. We started doing gallery shows with the, the handmade records, so we were presenting the records as art directly, so as to minimize the confusion among people who just want vinyl records. There's an intentional blending that's going on between the two mediums, the music and the art. I've always liked the juxtapositions though, it's like I've never completely buried myself in one crowd because that, to my mind, brings stagnation. So like joining the Marine Corps or doing art shows just puts you in different places and outside of your comfort zone. It keeps you on your toes. <laughs>